Good morning, everyone. It is Ashley Fields with Yard Art R Us, and today we are going to be painting this Joy to the World blank. I'm trying to just get all my stuff out of the way. Y'all, this piece is um, about 23 inches tall and around 30 inches wide, so I don't have the best camera angle. I'm going to have to kind of move it around just a little bit, so y'all bear with me. Uh, this is a template from Ashley del Rosario. I believe that's how you say her name. Um, and it is available in her Etsy shop. I believe it's called Bless Your Art. So you guys can find this template there. And I will be showing you how to paint that today. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Kathy. How are you beautiful ladies doing? Y'all, I had uh, a little disclosure. I had full intentions yesterday of going live. And um, yesterday was like one of those days that everything I touched uh, just kind of was going crazy. And um, about two o'clock, I was just about to go on live and Mary was on live. And right about that time, more things were kind of going crazy around here. We had like septic build, build up coming or backup coming into the shop yesterday and then trying to work on staking patterns and we got new stakes that don't fit into our racks. Uh, we spent like 30 minutes looking for hammers around here. It was just one of those days. And so I didn't make it on live yesterday. So what you guys, you guys are gonna see me twice today. Good morning, Ava. Good morning, Jennifer, uh, Amanda. So glad you guys are here. So I'm gonna do this live this morning and then I'll be back on this afternoon with our C9 uh, bulb live. So thank you all for being patient with me. I know you guys were expecting me um, yesterday and it just didn't quite happen. So let's go ahead and hop into this. While I am kind of getting my stuff ready, um, let me just tell you, I did two coats of white as my primer base with a, um, a roller. And then I came on top and you have regular red uh, on your joy letters. You have Christmas green on your tree. I have light yellow on the banner at the bottom and on the star up here at the top. Uh, this is just gray, and then your stripes in the background are black. So first thing I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna go ahead and get some, uh, this is really dark green and Christmas green mixed together. It's just a lighter version of dark green. So I'm just gonna start by getting some of that on this tree because I do put polka dots on the tree, and I think the um, shading looks better behind those polka dots. So the reason I'm really starting with that first is to try to let it dry. Uh, and that way I can come and do polka dots right over top of it. So at this point, I'm really just following those perimeter lines that are already there. Now right here in the middle, I don't have a line, but I kind of just, ooh, that looked a little funky. I kind of just make one with my paintbrush. There we go. Clean that up. And I'm just going to leave it, right? Because I am going to come in and add polka dots. So... Uh, just put a little bit of uh, perimeter shading and let it be. Now up here, I'm gonna kind of just come in and bring in a little bit of that green around that perimeter as well. And there you go, my green shading is done. I'm gonna put that paint, or put that paint, put that brush in the water and we will keep moving on. Good morning, Wendy, how are you doing? Amanda, how are you? What is everybody up to today? I'm curious to know, I actually have a load of lumber heading my way right now so that's exciting because y'all know those of you that live down here in the Houston area we have had like nothing but tons of rain for weeks now and so uh, we've been needing to get some lumber delivered but that's kind of hard to do when all it's doing is raining so I got a call about 7 45 this morning and said can you take a delivery and I'm like yes I can so that's exciting all right, I'm getting ready for uh, to do some blending on my banner down here. So I'm kind of starting with, uh, I'm trying to get equal parts of each color. And as y'all can see, I went a little bit overboard. It got really, really thick. I did not mean for that to happen, but hey, it happens sometimes. We're just going to roll with it. Good morning, Leticia. How are you, my dear? All right, so I've got shading yellow and I've got yellow. This yellow right here is the same yellow that I have down here on that banner. So I basically just kind of load them out next to each other. Again, y'all, I squirted a lot of paint. I did not mean to squirt this much paint on here, but we're going to work with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load that brush, which means I'm going to come in uh, into that paint and just kind of get a lip on my brush. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing on this back side. There we go. Got a lip going. Got a little too much up there. All right. I'm going to keep this darker side up against that perimeter. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Lindsay says it's a rainy day. I'm going to paint all day. Yes, girl. You go for it. Y'all, I have a... a uh, in my workshop here, we did a build out. I hope you guys can see that. We did a build out back in January of this year, but prior to that, I was at the mercy of the weather. And so when it would be raining a lot, um, that humidity would just do me in. And so this year has been really nice. I'm trying to look for my napkins, my paper towels, but I of course don't have over here. Um, so this build out has been nice to be able to help me uh, when it is really rainy and humidity uh, and has a, like high humidity because uh, I don't I'm just not as affected anymore by that weather because before y'all I wouldn't be able to paint it would just be a big mess so uh, Ava says getting some plywood tomorrow can't get MDO she says can't get MDO so what would you suggest um, Ava there are uh, there are some people that do use plywood and if you do that just use like a good edge sealer and put several coats um, of that edge sealer on there as well as uh, you're gonna want to put extra coats of like polyurethane now I know back in the day we used to use uh, birch before we switched to MDO the only thing with birch is it kind of it'll how do I, I don't know how to word this but it almost like comes off in threads like uh, you'll see like a stringer almost come across that wood and you can pull it out and it'll literally pull all the way across and take out all your beautiful painting so it's kind of just one of those that birch is honestly other than MDO is the only thing I have uh, firsthand knowledge of and while it will make a beautiful product if that is not that birch is not kind of uh, manufactured really well you can have problems down the line but I've heard a lot of people that do use sanded plywood so good morning Jessica good morning Robin so glad you guys are here all right y'all all I'm doing is I load my brush right I'm kind of getting half and half half of that shading yellow half of that light yellow and I load it up where there's a lip on here all right and then I take that dark color up against my line and I'm simply bringing those lines across right the blending really comes when you make that same motion several times so the first time I'm doing it it's more or less just to get that paint down right and then as you see me going back across that's when I'm trying to get it blended out that's when I'm getting those colors uh, kind of married in the middle where there's no distinct line between the two See how there's real no distinct line? It kind of just fades. That's why I like uh, the blending. Blending is something that if you just work with it, um, you can get your desired outlook. Now, when you're if you're new to blending and you're trying to work with something and it's just not going well for you, let it dry and come back and try again. The beautiful thing with it is you could just paint right back over top of it. So kind of just bringing those lines back and forth just to uh, take out that clear distinction in between those colors. It's just so pretty, y'all. There we go. Let me show you guys what that looks like up close. So blending on this banner, that's the only thing I'm gonna do the blending on. Everything else we're gonna do just regular shading. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, Amanda. So glad y'all are here. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna let that be. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm done with my brush. Oh, by the way, I should have told y'all this. Uh, I am. I used a Crafter's Choice three quarter inch. Uh, this is a camel hair brush. Uh, it is a flat tip and I like these brushes for blending because my bristles are soft and pliable, but when I do blend, I make sure that my brush is dry. It's a lot easier if your brush is dry. If it's wet, that can lead to a lot of issues. All right, now let's go ahead and just finish getting everything shaded. I need to shade my red. I need to shade this little light. Uh, this is reindeer brown down here. 
And then I need to just get a little bit of shading on that gray. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Ruth. What are y'all up to today? What's everybody doing this weekend? I'm curious to know. Okay, so tomorrow we have a uh, paint party at our store in Pearland for our Yard Art Academy members. Uh, Yard Art Academy is our subscription membership group. And once every quarter, we have a free paint party for those ladies and gentlemen. And so we have that tomorrow afternoon at our store. So those of you that are in the academy, I hope you guys can make it out tomorrow. And then um, Sunday, my husband, my daughter and I, we're gonna go to church and then we're gonna go out on a boat and go fishing. So. I am so sorry, everyone. I am having uh, technical difficulties. So we will try this again. And let's hope that this time, my Wi-Fi stays connected. Let me see y'all, I'm gonna get this pulled back up. There we go. So sorry about that. That was me. I don't know what's going on with my Wi-Fi, but it doesn't want to be, doesn't want to cooperate today. And um, yeah, that's just kind of something I have to deal with every now and again out here. So sorry about that. Hi, Carol. Hey, Debbie, thank y'all for coming and hopping back in. I'm so sorry. Wi-Fi is not my friend. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Hey, Belinda. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm sitting here talking and I look up and it's like um, uh, connection lost or something. And I was like, uh, okay. So here we go. Try it again. Y'all, I'm just using a little bit of this uh, red shading. The brush that I'm using right now is probably about a number 12 flat brush. Sometimes they're called flat uh, or a wash brush. It kind of just depends. Um, but I'm basically just going around the edges, the perimeter edges of my red paint color and kind of getting a little shading brought in. There we go. And we are just gonna keep on moving around. All right, there is that shading red. Again, I don't have the best cap camera angle because this piece is a little bit wider. It's about 23 tall and I think about 30 inches wide. So it's hard to get the entire thing in that camera view. So y'all bear with me. All right, I got that shading red on there. I'm gonna clean out this brush. I'm just gonna switch brushes. Let's just keep it easy. Um, the only other things I need to get shading on is just a little bit of brown down here and then um, a little bit of gray, which that gray honestly is such a tiny area. I don't really know that I'm gonna need much. Uh, let me find, I call this one my shading gray. All it is, y'all, is just gray with a couple drops of black. It's all, it's just hand mixed. It's nothing crazy. So I'm using like a number 10 right now. Just dip that edge and bring it in just a little bit. I know y'all probably can't even really see that, um, but it's such a small area, you really don't need a lot. We'll clean this brush out. And then right here on this little uh, uh, stump of our tree, that is reindeer brown on our base. So we will throw a little bit of shading brown on here. So let me get that shading brown. Now I kind of making a mess on my stripes, but the good thing about that is I can just clean that up very easily when I come in and do my highlights and my outline. And keep it simple. All right, I do think I wanna come in here and just get a tiny little bit of yellow shading inside of here. Not a whole lot. Let me grab a spoon, because this yellow is, is separated. Also, those of you who might be new to us, if you see me using these two ounce cups, basically when I'm shading and when I'm outlining, I always have just a little bit of water added to my paint to thin it out. I just find that to be easier to get longer fluid brush strokes. So I'm just gonna come around, tidy it all up. Simple as that. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Sarah. How are you guys doing today? All right, I'm gonna leave this be. You know what I'm actually gonna do? While I have this yellow out, I'm gonna just grab a script liner. And let's just go ahead and fill in this yellow star down here. 
luckily all of these lines are etched on here for you ladies and gentlemen so I kind of just take that brush I set it down inside of these etch lines and just pull it notice I really just do one uh, point at a time on that star and just pull it towards the center doesn't have to be perfect remember this is yard art um, so it's meant to be seen from a distance so give yourself a little grace you know if, if your lines aren't perfect or maybe they're a little shaky because from the road and from a distance people won't see those imperfections so I think that's why I enjoy yard art so much is that to me there's just a little bit more room um, you know to to have those mistakes and feel okay feel comfortable with it hi Myra hi Amanda how are you ladies doing all right I'm gonna hit this with my blow dryer right quick I need to get this green dry so I can get some polka dots oh, oh, there we go I actually might have to pull this a little closer over here got my uh, blow dryer getting stuck on the Christmas tree I got behind me Some, like really wet spots and when I have real wet spots and I'm just trying to get dried out I always just take my finger and just try to dab them a little bit as you can see this is how I get so dirty and how my sh my paint shirts turn to paint shirts I just kind of wipe all that paint off on me there we go. I didn't have the heat up on this thing. I'm going to kind of get it as dry as I can while I'm here. Uh, because as soon as I get these polka dots done, the rest is just really outlined. It's not a whole lot after that. Some outline and then get your words done. Alright, I think that'll, that'll be good enough. We'll make it work. Okay. Now, uh, on my tree, I have Christmas green in that background, and then I have um, a dark green Christmas green mixture on my shading, which you could just use plain dark green. That'll be just fine. It doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to do lime green polka dots. Again, I know this is sideways. Y'all bear with me. Whenever I am painting, and whatever you guys are painting, uh, it's easier to control your arm if you're comfortable in whatever position you're in. So that means sometimes I have to move around this piece where maybe it doesn't look that great in my camera angle, but it makes it easier for my arm um, to be able to uh, move where I need to move. So whenever I'm doing polka dots, I'll go off that edge a little bit like I just did and just simply take my finger and just wipe it up. No big deal. Um, I like them when they're going off the edge. That's my corgi, y'all. She is vocal, vocal, vocal. She loves to talk. Um, so yeah, as soon as I just go over that edge and then take that polka dot over into another color, use my finger and just bloop, wipe it off. No biggie. I love the polka dots on here. <laughs> I like seeing like a kind of like a good mixture of uh, different patterns or even like textures on stuff. So it's really all I'm going for at this moment. And just cleaning that up. Hey mom, how are you? Alrighty. We are just gonna keep on moving with this guy. Y'all, it always amazes me. Every time I go to do uh, my sponge jobbers, which this one, y'all, I'm going to guesstimate it's about an inch. Um, I've, I've been, I need to really order some more. These are Martha Stewart daubers, and they have like a, cla a plastic casing around them. But I've like lost half of my plastic casings. And we cleaned up my workshop yesterday, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to find all this stuff that's missing. And I still haven't found it, so who knows? I don't know where they are. I think that also tells me maybe it's time that you just get some new ones because uh, I've been using these for a while now at least I'd say a little over a year and I use a crud out of them I use them often so 
All right, we got those lime green polka dots on there. Again, let me hit this with the blow dryer just real quick, and then all the rest is outlined. We got all that shading done. I just need this dry enough that whenever I am um, coming in with my script liner that I'm not picking up the colors that are already on here. So it can be a little tacky. Tacky's fine. I just can't have it uh, wet still. for a few weeks I need to go get me some new script liners my script liners are kind of they're getting on the losing end of their the end of their life because they are starting to split pretty bad and like kind of go into like a V motion and sometimes I can use that and, and uh, make it work and other times it's just kind of like okay it's too far gone all right got some black I actually need to get this black filled up a little more because it is Looking a little low. So I'm gonna put some more black in there. And where is my squirt bottle of water? Oh, there it is. It's hiding from me. Like I said, y'all, earlier, <laughs> we kind of cleaned up my workshop in the last couple of days. And I'm one of those people that, for whatever reason, when things are crazy and chaotic and all over the place, I know where everything is. We go clean it up, and then I literally can't find anything. And you would think that having everything organized is uh, helpful, but I'm like total opposite. My brain more is like, oh, it could look like a total mess and I'll know exactly where everything is. <laughs> so I've been kind of struggling just trying to find all my stuff around. All right, I got some water added to this paint. Y'all, when I am outlining, oh, I'm going dripping paint over here already. When I'm outlining, uh, just for me, this is just my personal preference. I like my uh, paint watered down uh, real thin. And this, this black is almost like a, a little bit thicker than water, but it ain't much thicker than water. Um, that's just personal preference for me, for my brush. I've noticed the older my brush is, the more worn out it is, um, the more water that I can add to my paint and I can get fluid brush strokes out of it. Now, when I'm using a newer brush and it's still stiff and I haven't broken it in yet, I don't, I can't use as much water. It's just one of those things that um, over time, the more that you do something, the more that you kind of know what's going to work best for you. And so y'all probably see my paint and you're like, wow, that's really watered down, but that's just what works best for me. Um, if you guys like your paint a little bit thicker and that's what's worked best for you, then hey, by all means do that. That's the good thing about painting is there's no exact right or wrong. Just because somebody does it one way doesn't mean you have to type thing, you know? And um, yeah, so this is just kind of what Ashley finds to be a little bit easier. So at this point, all I'm really doing is just following those lines that are already etched on there for me and just kind of filling in. So these black stripes, I felt I filled them in um, with a mop brush. And so now I'm filling them in with a, um, a script liner because that mop brush does not get in all those etched lines. I'm hearing what sounds like a, uh, a 
dump truck or a delivery truck outside and I'm really hoping that that's not my lumber because I didn't think they'd be here till like 10 20 ish so hopefully it's not them I don't think it is here we go I'm gonna just keep on a moving hi Myra how are you Mary says this is so cute thank you what happens if you use too much water Debbie all I do is take more paint and add more paint now, if you're, if you'll know if you have too much water, and that's if you put your paint down, and wherever you put that paintbrush down, it separates from there, or it just kind of fans and waters itself out. Uh, that's how you'll know it's too much. For me, it's kind of like the second I go to put my brush down, if it's dripping off of my brush to where I can't even get that brush to touch my wood before it's dripping, then that's too much for me. But I think the easiest way to know what's best for you is to start with a few drops, right? And then start painting with it. If your br brush is not going very far, if you don't have long strokes. If you put a little paint on there and you go to put your brush down and that's as long as a stroke as you get, is that little tiny stroke I just made, add a little bit more water. I definitely think, I think Mary can agree to this too, uh, the more practice, the more you do something, the more that you're going to know, and y'all, half the time I know before I even put that brush down what I need to do with my paint, whether that's add more paint to it or if that's add more water to it. I can just tell by that consistency that I see on my brush. Um, so again, that's just something that really comes. I think with experience and with a little time. And Mary says, I'd like some more paint in the container. I, I would put some more paint in the container. And see, that's, that's what would work for her. That's the fun thing about this is um, we could all do it a little differently to what comes out better for us. I think this is also why I love these black stripes because I can kind of freely go in here and start you know uh, following along with these lines and I can almost go kind of willy-nilly with it because I'm get to start and stop in a black area and so it doesn't have to be as perfect you know all right so from here I'm really just cleaning up again cleaning up all those stripes that I already have, making those lines smooth. Same thing here. Bring those out. All right, we are getting somewhere. This is so cute. I love this pattern. Those of you that might have missed it, this is uh, Bless Your Art by Ashley. This is her template. You could find it on her Etsy shop. And uh, we do have the, we're just selling the blank at Yard Order Us. And I did post a link in that first video. I don't think I got it in this one because this one I was just trying to get back on because my Wi-Fi kicked me out. Let me move these right quick. While I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and get these words filled in. Y'all, I got to turn it towards me so that it's easier for me to get my brush down in these lines. I get that it's sideways for y'all. Just bear with me a few minutes. Uh, let me kind of start getting these words filled in. So whenever I'm doing words, to me the easiest thing is just fill in that brush, right? Set it down in those grooves and just pull it. Pull that brush into those grooves. That's a nice part about your pattern being etched, right? Because if it's just drawn on with graphite paper and a pencil, there is no... Um, there's no texture to that. It's just sitting right there on top. This kind of has a texture to it. So you can literally put your brush down in those crevices and just pull it. And I think that's what makes it easier to paint words on blanks to me, unless you're somebody who is good at uh, hand lettering, which y'all not my forte. Uh, something I would love to learn and work on but I can say I'm not, I'm not uh, there yet. So because I cannot hand letter, I love these grooves that are already there for me. I think it makes it easy. 
Notice I just come back into that paint cup. I dip my brush into there, pick up a little bit more paint, and simply set it down. Follow the grooves. And y'all, if you look at my stuff up close, I do not stay in these lines perfectly at all whatsoever. They are not perfect, um, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Plus, once that black dries, I will come back in here with some white and just kind of do a highlight right on top. And that'll help to kind of disguise those imperfections. That's the, the kind of one of those fun things about this is I've gotten real good at, at kind of disguising my bobos or parts where I'm like, whoopsie, I went outside that line. I don't worry about it. I really just come back and throw a highlight on it and bada bing, bada boom. Nobody would know the difference. just love seeing pieces coming together. I don't know about y'all, but I love seeing um, the words as they start to get filled in, which is one of my favorite parts um, of the painting process. Almost there, y'all. I'm trying to move fast. Times. My hand doesn't work as fast as I might like it to. Woo! That kind of fell off. That's okay. Good thing is I just kind of pushed it over where I needed it. But that also goes to show y'all how watered down that paint is right now. It's at a consistency that I like, but that might not be best for, for most people. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Joy to the world. Got those, got the words done. Y'all bear with me. I know it's upside down. I know it's gonna be a little funky. Uh, but when I'm outlining, I've got to turn it where I need it to be. I'm just going to do this part right quick, and then I will turn it right back for y'all so that it'll be nice and easy for you guys to see it. And clean these lines up. Now, on this, um, the bulb right here, your, uh, I guess your hanger that's kind of coming off that bulb, it's halfway in black and then halfway in white. So what I do is kind of just fill in that whole, this whole curly cue right here in black. And then whenever I am doing my highlights, I'll come right back over top of that and just put a white highlight over top of that. And it'll really clean those lines up for me. And then I'm not having to bring in another color such as like, you know, a darker gray um, to just get that one line on there. <laughs> throw some black and then throw some white. And bada bing, bada boom, it shall be done. All right, y'all, now just finish out this J. Here, every time I come across these um, stripes, I'm just taking that black and just cleaning up those lines, just making them a little bit more crisp. Same thing right there. Come over here. Come down. Now this banner, notice I'm not putting any black on that banner. I am not going to outline that banner in black. If anything, I'll bring in a script liner with that, um, that shading yellow and just touch up my lines. 
but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna outline it in black. I love that yellow look on there. I think that's what makes your banner stand out. And if I put that black on there, I just think it'll make it a little too dark. All right, let me turn this around. Let you ladies and gentlemen uh, kind of see where we're at. So we got all that black outlining done. Only thing we've got left to do at this point, uh, we need to add some white highlights and we need to um, outline the stump of our tree. Watch out, baby. My, dog, my dog's trying to sit underneath my feet. Now, whenever I am outlining um, anything in the brown family or like skin tones, I like to use shading red. So shading red's that same red that we use to um, shade our joy letters. I'm just simply using that paint on a script liner. And this script liner, y'all, is a, a royal gold number four. I am a creature of habit, and I'm always using that same exact script liner. All right, from there, all we really need to do is um, get some white on here. Now, on Joy, uh, the to the world, the black letters, when they dry, I will come in with some white and just do a very light, wispy uh, line with my script liner over top. We're okay over top of that but I'm not gonna do that until it's dry if you try to do it right now it'll turn gray and it'll kind of just really just turn into a big old mess and I just don't want to do that all right so now I'm just gonna take this white basically I kind of set it down and just do some light wispy motions I'm not trying to put it on um, pressure I'm really just kind of I place that brush down and I'm just pulling it. Just kind of, uh, oh, I need to come in with some black right there after I finish this. I kind of forgot about the middle of that O. Now on these letters, I notice how I didn't do any swish marks. That was on purpose. And that was because I felt like these looked better just being a little bit more um, plain Jane. Um, I liked the J-O-Y being plain because I've got a lot of other things going on. I've got stripes, I've got polka dots, I've got a blended banner down here. You know, I just didn't want to be overpowering. Now I'll take a little bit of white down here on that banner. And again, when you're working with that white, light and wispy. I'm not trying to be heavy with my brush when I'm doing highlights. I'm trying to be uh, just very light handed light touch there's also no real right or wrong i'm just kind of trying to almost get a, a light wispy line on the inside of all of my letters i'll come down here and maybe just add a couple little lines down here add a little Woo! see picked up black right there oopsie i'm gonna leave the rest of that alone because those words are really really wet and um, I don't want to pull any of that black into anything else. Now up here on my bulb, I'll just kind of come in just like this. Same thing. And then now right here, uh, I'll just very lightly, whoa. Very, very light, just kind of follow that around. There's a lot of wet black paint underneath that, so I'm gonna let it be. Now I do see, I don't know if y'all can see, I've got a little bit of green right here on that white. That happened whenever I was base coating. So I'll just take that script liner and cover it. Let me turn it back to you guys. Um, only thing I really see left I wanna do is grab, grab a little bit of yellow and on that banner, I do want to just kind of clean up those edges. And let me actually get that black right quick and fix this middle of the tree. And then right here on the tip of, um, of my bulb, I was just missing that black right there. And then fill that, boom. All right, now that black's done. Now our white highlights are done with the exception of the words, right? Because those words have to be dry before I can really mess with it. So I'm gonna switch back to that shading yellow Shading yellow is that same color I put right here um, and I did that blending with on my banner. And I'm just going to bring that shading yellow in on a script liner and just clean up those edges so that they look more crisp. 
You could even bring it all the way around and just do a little profile outline. To me, that just helps it to look a little bit more finished. Come in over here. Come all the way across. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Let me see if I can. Um... Hi, hello everyone. Let me try to hold it up and show you a better view. Here we go. There is your joy to the world. Only thing I have left to do is I need white highlights on the to the world. I will do that after it dries. As a quick recap, I basically did two coats of white as my primer. I used a roller. I did two coats of white. And then I came in with my mop brushes and base coated uh, red on my, uh, my J-O-Y letters. I used Christmas green on my tree. I used regular light yellow on that banner and on the star. The stump of my tree is done with um, reindeer brown. And then I just got a little bit of gray right here on the top of my bowl. From there, I used shading red on my red. On my green tree, I used a mixture of dark green and uh, regular Christmas green. I just kind of lightened up the dark green a little bit for my shading. And I used lime on my polka dots. Uh, let's see what other, else. Uh, down here is all, the yellow is all done with shading yellow and light yellow. And then we've basically outlined in black with the exception of the stump on my tree. I did outline that with shading red. And my banner, I just used a little shading yellow to kind of clean up those lines. And that was about it for this guy. So Felicia says, love this one. Thank you, my dear. Debbie says, looks great. Thanks, Debbie. So what do you guys think? I hope you guys like it. Uh, we do have this blank at yardartrus.com. If you are interested in this template, it is Ashley Del Rosario's at Bless Your Art. I think it's Bless Your Art by Ashley, or maybe it's just Bless Your Art. She is on Etsy, so you can find her there. And other than that, I will be, I've got a, a, a delivery of lumber coming. It should be here within an hour. And then um, I will be back on later on today with our C9 bulbs. So I'm going to show you those painted. I think I might do one as a solid glitter bulb in case if those of you that are new might want to see how you solid glitter something. We'll do some painted and a